Thank Your you. therapist there, nice to have you here with us this morning. Thank you. Good you morning. Know, that statement is so true, right? We don't pay attention to our other, the other part of our physical being, which is our mental state of mind. And why is that important? Absolutely. I mean, for good physical, emotional, mental health well-being, we need to look at self-care, not just focusing on our physical health, but also on our mental health. And very typically, when we are feeling stressed, when we're feeling anxious, we can end up engaging in more stress-associated behaviors. We might tend to overeat. We might tend to turn to drugs or alcohol. We might start to uh, isolate and withdraw. So all those good New Year resolutions to address our physical health, to get fit and to maybe lose weight can just be sabotaged because we're not taking care of our mental health. So let's talk about self-care. What are, what are some things that we can do to, to, to make ourselves mentally better off uh, in, the, in the new year? Absolutely. I think the first thing is to set goals that you really uh, find meaningful and purposeful for you. Um, and I think the other things that we can do is really, we hear a lot about mindfulness now and looking at ways that we can incorporate mindfulness into our daily routines. As I said, that when we're stressed, when we're anxious, we can engage in these behaviors um, that might not be helpful, might be mm -hmm. sabotaging our um, physical uh, New Year's resolutions. But mindfulness Mindfulness really helps in terms of um, helping us to calm down um, those more stress-related um, feelings and emotions. When we're stressed, um, our brains um, tend to experience difficult and unpleasant emotions, and then we tend to react to those emotions, and that's when we can actually engage in maybe some unhelpful behaviors. But mindfulness really hits that pause button. It really really helps our brains to not uh, go into that fight or flight reaction and it really helps us to think about how we want to respond rather than react. So some of the things that we can do to incorporate mindfulness in our daily lives is to think about mindful eating, for example. If one of our goals is to um, is the weight loss, we mm -hmm. can think about ways that we can just pay attention to how we're eating, not multitasking, not checking our devices and checking our emails, mm -hmm. but just just focusing on eating, focusing on the sensations and the textures of the food, slowing down our eating. We can practice mindfulness in the car, we can practice breathing, we can uh, practice um, mindfulness when we're looking at our sleep routines, for example, in terms of are we multitasking or are we just focusing on um, having routines that are relaxing um, and are self-soothing and calming. So many of us live a hurried life. Absolutely. We don't take time to think mm -hmm. about any of that and you obviously uh, give people tools to work on that. So uh, what would be a typical tool that you would, you would give to a patient that says, look, I, I just live a very confused, stressed out life. What would be one thing that you would, you would recommend? Um, so good self-care tips like practicing mindfulness, being aware of our emotions, being aware of how we respond to some of those emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, really focusing on what some of the messages that we might be internalizing, sometimes thinking about some of the ways that we are talking to ourselves, whether we're talking to ourselves in a self-affirming way or whether we're talking to ourselves in a negative way, hmm. and then how are we responding to those thoughts and how are we responding um, uh, and how are those behaviors helping us or, or not helping us? In, your, in the notes that I have, uh, in this discussion, they talk about brain exercises. I, I wouldn't even know where to begin there. <laughs> Tell me about those. What is a brain exercise? So, just as it's important to exercise our physical bodies, it's also important to exercise our brains. Um, healthy brains um, uh, give way to uh, healthy thoughts and healthy feelings. If you think about it, everything happens in our brain. Oh, yeah. um, it's where we process our emotions, it's where we send messages in terms of how to behave. Um, how, how we think, how we interpret things. So there's a lot of studies now that show that if we have healthy brains, if we exercise our brains, it's also good for our mental health. The thing
thing is our brains like what's familiar um, so mm. we have to really kind of motivate and kick our brains butt a little bit to learn new things but if we're learning something that is unfamiliar if we're learning new knowledge um, there's a lot of evidence that shows now that it creates new neural pathways um, mm. and but the tip is we have to learn something that is new um, so like learning a new language learning um, a musical instrument um, really stretch your brain absolutely yeah. Yeah. if if you're good at crossword puzzles great do that but in order to develop those new neural pathways you should be doing Sudoku so doing what your brain is it doesn't know and what is not familiar so procrastinating that it's a good time to start well Caroline Adderton thank you for very much for all those tools and uh, happy new year to you happy new year and to you and hopefully when I see you next year I'll, my brain will be very exercised and I'll be ready to talk to you again <laughs> I hope so too <laughs> thank so you much. very much all right.